Hello, and welcome to another screencast about Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. This time we're going to throw in a couple of trig and exponential functions. Okay, so again, a brief review here of the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. So it says that if f is a continuous function on the interval from a to b, and big F is any antiderivative of little f, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to big F evaluated at b minus big F evaluated at a. Okay, so for this example, we've got the integral from 0 to 4 of the function 5 e to the t minus sine of t plus 2 t to the third power. Okay, so again, you'll notice we have differences in sums. Okay, so all we can do is just do the integral or the antiderivative of each piece separately. Okay, so that's not a big deal there. Um, this function is certainly continuous. e to the t doesn't have any problems, sine of t doesn't have any problems, and 2t cubed doesn't have any problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the antiderivative then of each piece, and then we'll figure out um, what our final answer is going to be. Okay, so the antiderivative of 5 e to the t, so the 5 is just a constant, so that's going to be brought along. And then the antiderivative of e to the t, so again, ask yourself the question, what function has a derivative that's e to the t? <laughs> well, that's just e to the t. Okay, so the antiderivative of e to the t is e to the t, and the derivative of e to the t is e to the t. Okay, don't let that one get too confusing on you. All right, we've got a negative sign here. Okay, now we've got to think about what function, when we take the derivative of it, will give us sine of t. Okay, so we know it's going to be cosine, hopefully. So then what's the sine, S-I-G-N, plus or minus going to be on that? Well, remember the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Oh, and here we've got a negative attached to our sine. So technically this is then going to be plus cosine of t. Okay, so again, if that feels like I pulled a fast one on you there, take the derivative of cosine of t, and that gives you negative sine of t, which is exactly what's sitting here in the middle. All right, plus, now we've got to do the antiderivative of 2t to the third. Okay, so again, the 2 is a coefficient. That just comes along for the ride. We want to use our power rule then in reverse. So we're going to add 1 to 3. That gives us a 4. And then we have to divide by that new exponent. Okay, so if we go to take the derivative of this function, the 4 would come down. That would cancel with this 4. And we'd have 2t to the third power left. Okay, we're going to evaluate this from 0 to, oopsie, 4. Okay, we could pretty this last one up a little bit, so I'll do that when we go to plug in our numbers. Okay, so plugging in 4, evaluating our function here at 4, we've got 5e to the 4th power plus cosine of 4 plus 1 half 4 to the 4th power. All right, so that's going to be our first one. So that is our antiderivative evaluated at our top end point, which is 4, then minus. Okay, now we got to do the same thing with 0. And some of you may just try to plug in 0 and think, oh, we're going to get 0. Mm, not necessarily. Okay, so if I plug in 0, I'm going to have 5e to the 0 plus cosine of 0 plus 1 half times 0 to the 4th. Okay, all right, so now let's see if we can figure out what any of these numbers are. Hmm, 5e to the 4th, well, I don't think that one can be simplified much. Same thing with cosine of 4. But I can at least simplify what this number is, so I believe that gives us 128 when I go to do that. Okay, then minus 5 times e to the 0. Remember, anything to the 0 power is 1, so that's going to give us 5, plus cosine of 0 is 1. Now, that will be plus 0 at the end, because anything 0 to the 4th power is 0 times a half is just going to give us 0. Okay, so then when I go to combine some of my like terms here, so I have 5e to the 4th plus cosine of 4, and then I'm going to have 128 minus 6, so I believe that gives me a grand total of 122. Okay, so this would be my exact value for this integral. And if you want to crunch that out on your calculator, that gave me approximately 394.34. Okay, next one. Let's see what other loveliness we have here. 
Okay, evaluate the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 5 to the theta power plus 2 cosine of theta d theta. Okay, so again, remember, this thing here on the back just tells us the variable we're going to be using. That's the variable we're going to be integrating in terms of. So all of our functions then should be in terms of theta. Okay, so we know that, like we just talked about, e to the t, the antiderivative was e to the t. Oh, unfortunately, though, just like with derivatives, that doesn't quite work the same if you have a base that's not e. Okay, so the antiderivative of 5 to the theta, then, is going to be 5 to the theta, again, just like the derivative, but instead of multiplying by the natural log of 5, which is what we did with derivatives, we're going to divide by the natural log of 5. Okay, and again, that's because it's the natural log of your base. Fantastic. Then we have plus 2, okay, because again, 2 is a coefficient, so that just gets brought along for the ride here. So the antiderivative of cosine of theta. All right, so we've got to ask ourselves the question, what function, when I take the derivative, will give me cosine of theta? And that's sine of theta. So that's my antiderivative. Okay, again, let's check it. Let's do the derivative. So if you do the derivative of 2 sine theta, do you get 2 cosine theta? Absolutely. Okay, so that's how you know you've done your answer, or you've done your antiderivative correctly. And now we're going to evaluate this from negative 1 to 1. And again, we're going to have some lovely answers here. Okay, so we're going to have 5 to the first divided by the natural log of 5 plus 2 sine of 1. Okay, so that's one of our numbers. And then minus, we're going to have 5 to the negative 1. Okay, so again, I got this top one by doing my f of b, the top endpoint, which is 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and evaluate my antiderivative of negative 1, my lower endpoint. So that's 5 to the negative 1 ln of 5 plus 2 sine of negative 1. Okay? And unfortunately, I don't think there's much prettying up we can do with this one. So this would be a one way that we could leave our answer. But if you want to go ahead and approximate that, when I threw that into my calculator, I got 6.35. Okay. And again, I also checked to make sure my function was continuous. And yes, I don't have any problems with 5 to the theta, or I don't have any problems with 2 cosine theta. So we are good to go. Thank you very much for watching.